So I want to talk about some of the other surface features. Um, we mentioned that the rills are geological features as well. So what's a rill? Um, it's essentially just a long and thin ditch along the surface of the moon. Um, they're formed in various ways. So they, there's like an umbrella, they're all called rills, but there's different kinds of them. So um, some of them are straight lines like this one. This is the Rima Koshi. And this type of rill is formed when the surface pulls apart, possibly as it's cooling, and then the ground there sinks into the gap that's formed. Um, on Earth, this type of feature is called a graben. And then um, in the slides, I have links to all of these on Google. Well, it says Google Maps because it really is run by Google. So if you click on these links, it'll take you to these surf, uh, surfaces on the moon. It turns out um, Google Maps has maps of everything that we've mapped. So I think this is a pretty fun tool. Might be fun to explore as we go through talking about other solar system objects. Um, you can, if you're curious about this tool, you can zoom way out. You can see the entire surface of the moon. You can, you know, explore it, zoom into features that are interesting to you. Um, so yeah, have fun with that. Okay, but for now, um, the Rimakoshi is one type of, well, this is a specific name of that rill, but this is a straight rill. Um, there are also sinuous rills that sort of meander about, and these are not formed by the surface pulling apart, but instead formed by um, underground rivers that create lava tubes that then collapse. And then there's a third type of rill called an arcuate rill, and this is essentially a region of lava um, where it, it's like along the edge of the maria and it's a collapsing feature again. So instead of being like an underground feature that then collapses in, it's just a, a feature near the edges of the maria. So lots of different types of rills, but all of them are essentially geological in nature, either because of lava or formed as the moon cools and pulls apart at its surface as it shrinks. So when we study Mars, be on the lookout to see if you notice similar surface features that indicate how Mercury shrunk and cooled or indicate whether or not it had volcanism. Okay. So those are all the features created by geology. And now we wanna look at the features created by space. So um, you're already probably familiar with what a crater is. So I'm not gonna talk about that yet. Um, but catenas you might not be familiar with. Essentially, this is just when a um, cratering object comes in and it breaks into fragments. And then each of those fragments creates a crater in a line. So um, it's basically just the trail of craters from a single impacting body. So um, this one is not on the moon. This is Enki Katna on Jupiter's moon Ganymede. So I uh, couldn't find a, a really good picture of uh, lunar Katna. Um, cratering also results in other secondary effects such as pulverizing the surface rock so that it becomes the lunar regolith. Regolith is just what planetary scientists call soil, um, specifically surface soil. So on the moon, the regolith, the soil is basically dust. And then finally, of course, you know about craters and those are basically impact bowls made by some object that's impacting the moon. Um, I think it's really cool to notice that craters come in lots of different sizes. So you can see on the moon's surface, there, there are very large and old craters that have been filled in by Maria. There are smaller, but still very conspicuous craters on the highlands. Um, such as Copernicus Crater here, which is a 90 kilometer diameter object. Um, but there's also micro craters. So this is a piece of the lunar soil brought back by the Apollo astronauts. And you can see tiny crater features, even on this little piece of dust from the lunar soil. So this is, you know, a quarter of a millimeter in diameter, um, and it still has micro craters. So these, what we call micro meteoroids, are always impacting the moon. They continue to impact the moon. The moon doesn't really have any form of erosion from wind or water. 
but it does have a small amount of erosion from these micro meteoroid impacts. So how is a crater made? Well, of course, it has to be an impacting body. And when that body strikes the surface, it um, liquefies and vaporizes the material that it impacts. Of course, the cratering body breaks into many pieces and it sends a shock wave through the surface. Um, because of that shock wave, there's a recoil. And so material is ejected as the surface recoils. And then the material that's blasted out of the impact zone settles back in and refills the crater. Um, there are videos of this process. This um, website does simulations. So here's one, I'll try to stream it here. It's a little bit slow, but here you can see that the impactor has already formed. This is showing uh, the material rebounding and now it's going to start settling in. So you can see as it starts settling, it's gonna um, create a little bit of a hill at the edge of the crater. And now you can see at the center of a crater, there's um, a rebound from the very center material. So that's the last material to be, to you know, rebound just like the center of a trampoline is the last part of the trampoline to come back up after you jump off of it. So that's how a crater is made. And this process results in a very characteristic shape for craters. Um, they tend to have a relatively flat floor with walls that have some curve to them. Um, there's a rim at the edge of the wall. Uh, there's a generally a central peak from that recoil process at the center. And then there's what we call ejecta, just the stuff that got blasted out is all called ejecta. And then there's features called rays, um, which kind of, you know, they're, they're long features um, that extend from the surface or from the edges of the crater. And that's also caused by the material falling back down. And then also that material serves essentially to crater the surface where it hits in the lunar regolith. All right. So the moon does have mountains, but those mountains are generally the central peaks of craters or they are the edges of craters that have been eroded. Um, so this one I think is called, I think this mountain is named after Tico, if I remember correctly. And here are some other pictures of crater rays. This is not the moon, this is Mercury, um, but you can see how the ejecta kind of forms a spidery shape coming away from the crater. All right, so these rays are generally associated with younger craters. And so one more chat question for you. Why do you think that is? Okay, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of variations on the same theme. Um, the rays would be fairly delicate features. They're made of the ejecta from a crater. So if they you know, are eroded by, for example, other impacts, even micrometeoroid impacts, then they'll be erased from the surface. So if we see rays, then we know that that crater must have been young and not have had time to be eroded by more recent impacts of whatever size. Awesome. Okay, um, so you'll notice as we look at the picture of the moon here that craters have a variety of different depths. And um, even though the moon has no atmosphere, it does have a little bit of water in the very uh, deepest depths of some of the uh, craters that remain in permanent shadow. So I wanna kind of talk about the crater shadowing um, so that you can kind of get a feel for why there could be permanently frozen water in those shadows. 